Good evening and welcome to tonight's webinar, how to accelerate your sales with LinkedIn events or how LinkedIn events can accelerate sales. Thanks for joining me. I am just getting ready. We're live on YouTube. We're live on LinkedIn. So let me know in the chat where you're joining from. Say hello in the chat. That will be brill. I'm just pulling up all the screens here so I can see where everybody's joining from and say hi. But also importantly, I can answer your questions. So it's really important that you say hello and I can see where you're joining from, what's going on, the work. So welcome to the webinar. It's going to be very practical tonight. So uh, hi, Nicola from Stevenage. And some people are joining here, so I can see people are jumping in now. The uh, notifications on LinkedIn are firing and pinging everywhere. So we're going to be talking about how LinkedIn events can be really powerful as a sales channel. Now, I'm going to be really practical with this. I'm going to talk you through it. I may even abandon my uh, slides and just go for the good old screen share. Um, hi, Rachel. Hi, Martin. San Jose, California. Uh, so I am joining tonight from my home. I moved house these last week and a bit. So apologies if it's all a little bit upside down. Hi, D Mitchell from Arizona. Emily from Brooklyn, New York. And Emily's been here before. So hi, Emily again. And some of you are joining on YouTube and other channels. So hi, Shobit there on YouTube in Northern California. So Brill, welcome everybody. And um, just, um, just let me kind of give you an intro. We'll dive into it and away we go. So hopefully this is all going to be interesting for you. And I'm not going to go into the tutorial of, you know, this is how you make a LinkedIn event, but I'm going to explain how they will help you sell more stuff. Whatever you sell, they'll help you sell more stuff. So uh, that's what we're really going to cover tonight. So if you've never been to one of these webinars before, I'm the founder of Maverick. I started Maverick as a solopreneur business and built it up into what it is today, which is a team working across um, across ponds. Um, and uh, we help Big companies, small companies, startups, beer moths, institutions, the works benefit from social selling. Um, hi, Ismail from Saudi Arabia. So um, I'm not into cold calling. I don't have a problem if people want to do it, but I just find that it's not a, a great method anymore and it's difficult. And uh, I didn't start with a silver spoon. I didn't have a small loan of a million dollars. So I built Maverick and I teach what we do. So everything that I share on webinars is something I've practiced. So I practice what I preach. And we've hosted actually 214, I think it is. I don't know whether Luke can check, but it's about 214 uh, LinkedIn events. And we built our business with hundred, probably more than 100,000 attendees now on our LinkedIn events. So I'm going to show you how they can help you sell how they can create opportunities and how you can use them as part of the buyer journey because every buyer every decision maker is on a journey to that sale they are not just going to wake up one morning and decide to give you a po they're not going to wake up one morning and say here's my money what you're going to do for me there is a journey from them not knowing you to them trusting you to them understanding you to them seeing the value in working with you to them becoming a customer and to them becoming a referrer of business to you. So we're going to look at how LinkedIn can speed up that process, how LinkedIn events can speed up that process. So I'm going to talk to you about, just remind you what it is, I've kind of done that already, how to get, pro why it's so hard to get prospects engaged. So I'm going to explain why most of you are feeling like nobody's buying right now. I'm going to explain it. It's not your fault. It's not something you've done. It's what's happening right now. I'm going to explain why that's happening. I'm going to explain how we overcome it. Then I'm going to show you some different types of LinkedIn events and explain which ones work for better things. Give you a process map and do some Q&A. So hopefully this is all cool with everybody. So let me, let me just get into it here. Why am I doing this webinar, right? Well, I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I know that people watching this today and watching this on replay will go, yeah, I'm interested, Dean, in what you do, and you can help me. So 
that, that obviously I'm going to win some business from doing this kind of activity. I'm also growing our engagement. I'm also looking to get referrals and recommendations, social proof. But I'm also mass educating and building our brand and building trust. This is the purpose of the webinar. This is the purpose of LinkedIn events. This is your, so everything I'm doing tonight is what you can do for your clients. Now, uh, you might not be selling something as obvious as LinkedIn. You might be selling complex designs. You might be selling nuclear reactors. But we have expertise in various different industries in using events as a buyer education tool that allows you to get talking to buyers earlier in their journey. And typically, buyers tend to go with, customers tend to go with the first person they've spoke to. So, hi, Deva at, uh, uh, oh, in Dublin. So, being edu uh, proactive in educating your decision makers, educating your prospect prospective clients, shaping the world that they see, and you being the go-to person, the trusted advisor in their world is powerful. So that's what we're going to show you how to do in this webinar tonight. So uh, just as a aside, uh, it's a little promo. I'll mention this a couple of times. There's no obligation. There's no hammering. But we actually have a full mini course explainer on how to do this. And I explain how I built my business, scaled it massively using uh, LinkedIn events. So if you want some more details for that, uh, drop us an email. I think I think it's about 25 quid, the course with the tutorial. So if you want it, uh, you can have it. Hi, Susan from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, John from Taunton in Somerset. Ta John, you are just up the road. I am in Ivy Bridge, just uh, west, uh, east of Plymouth. So um, we have got that mini course. If you want it, uh, drop us an email. We'll send you the details. Dead simple. Okay, so um, let's just be real about the challenge, the sales challenge here in 2023. So let's just be real for a minute. Money is not as easy to get hold of right now. Um, money's money's a tight on tight supply. There's a lot of pressure on businesses. There, even the big businesses and buyers are more concerned about making decisions. Budgets are being scrutinized more. So all of that economic stuff is swirling. But you've also got this other challenge that actually your decision makers are being hammered by sales pitches from different companies, um, some of them relevant, some of them not relevant. And so we have this economic uncertainty and all that kind of stuff going on. And we've got all of this noise. And so what's happened is, first of all, it's harder to speak to a prospect than ever before. It's just way more difficult. Second, we've got uncertainty. So what we're finding, and what we're seeing is buyers are doing more research without ever talking to you. So that it used to be people would make an inquiry get with a couple of people, and then they would evaluate the information and then make a decision. So you as a business, the seller, would be involved earlier in the buying journey. But now, from a convenience point of view, buyers are doing more research on their own without you. And so you might get contacted very late in the game, very late down the journey, and you've got to establish trust, rapport, expertise, all that kind of stuff. So this is the challenge we're in. It's noisy, uncertainty, and the way the buyers, our customers are evaluating and deciding to move forward means that we are increasingly speaking to them later in their decision-making process, much later down the line, um, almost when they're ready to buy. But the problem is we haven't had any chance to speak to them, engage with them, shape how they thought, give them considerations. So the buyers are already pretty educated 
about products, services, solutions before they ever talk to you. And then you have this frustrating scenario where a lot of their ideas are already made up, where if you spoke to them earlier in the journey, you could have given them some helpful advice that would show them there's a better way or a different way. And so what you have is them effectively setting the agenda without you. So this is the challenge we have. Yeah. And what we're seeing is that even if you outreach, the response rates are down 30%. So silly logic, but what have companies done? Increase the volume. So the volume, the what they were sending is falling. So now they've just turned up the volume even more. So it's getting more difficult. It's a challenging environment um, for all of us. So, and let's be honest, I have this conversation with a lot of people. They say, do you know what? I don't really need thousands of leads. I just need two or three really good ones. And that becomes the challenge. How do you find two or three really good ones and not um, put all your eggs in one basket? Yeah, that makes sense. How do you find two or three good leads without putting all your eggs in one basket? In other words, only going after two or three good leads. Yep. And I see this as a dilemma that salespeople go through all the time. So the noise is out there. It's hard to cut through. It's hard to get the buyer's attention. It's hard to get the buyers to engage with you. So what's the option? Well, this is what everybody's doing. They're trying to connect and convert. They're doing it on LinkedIn. They're doing it on email. They're doing it on phone calls. This is what everybody's doing. Or they're doing this weird one. I'm going to put out loads of content and it's all going to convert and I'm going to bring out all the leads from just content. Really? Really? If inbound had been the uh, 100% success model, um, we wouldn't need outbound. And think about this from a big, big company's point of view. If that worked, content and convert, the big companies would have nailed it by now and they haven't. So we have to use content to engage people, absolutely. And we, ha but, and we have to convert. But there is a whole piece around how we put this together. And LinkedIn events can be the key to doing this. And I'm going to show you how I do it uh, so you can do it. Um, so if we do this, the four, uh, four parts to this, we actually get way more impact, massive, massive amounts of impact. Because what we're doing is we're, we're building the trust we're building engagement, we're connecting, and we're getting the opportunity to talk to them. And I'll give you an example. When you do a LinkedIn event, people are way more open to talking to you after the event, way more receptive to your message, way more open if they've got value. And so that's why LinkedIn events can be powerful because you can target and grow your network and host events that actually give value to your audience, give value to your target clients to your prospects without having to ram stuff down their throats. So I want to show you how I use them. And like I said, there is a little mini course we've got on this. So if you want to implement it, we've got a full kind of breakdown of how to do it. But I want to show you two types of events that really help with buyers. Um, and one of them you're on right now. So the first thing to understand about um linkedin events you really have to define them by who are they for so i'll give you an example uh, let me just pull up my content and i'll just show you this is my personal linkedin events so these are my personal linkedin events these are events that i've done on my profile and I prefer to do audio events on my profile because they're way more successful, like really successful. Audio events on your profile are very successful. So I do audio events and live events on my LinkedIn profile. And you can see my attendees and volumes of people. Yep. So it's a bit hit miss depending on what I'm doing, but there's there's a lot of people getting involved and showing up. So you can see there is my bank of videos, uh, my audio events. Now, when you do an audio event on your profile, your network gets notified. So this one here that I've done here, how 
what content works on LinkedIn. I did this at half past four today. 193 people uh, care, signed up to come to this, and I did. I set up the event and launched it in the same period of time. So these 193 people actually showed up. So I hosted this event and I gave some practical value with a call to action. It wasn't a call to action to buy something. It was a call to action to have a, uh, some more value around this topic. And I did this deliberately to add value, educate the buyers, build the trust, and uh, add even more value for people who wanted to engage with me directly. And so out of this event, 193 people um, uh, came or visited it. And I got about 35 people wanting to talk to me more. So that's mammoth with audio events. So audio events on your profile can be really powerful in terms of using it to, gr first off, grow your network with the right people, be really focused, and then start to put educational events. You can bring guests if you want to, but educational events to to give your buyers a new way of thinking or some practical insight into how they reach that destination. All of our buyers, whether you're selling LinkedIn, cybersecurity, widgets, they're looking for an end outcome. And so all of my events speak to those end outcomes that people want to achieve. Now, because I'm doing this audio events and I've got a regular pattern, it doesn't have to be every day, you could do one a month if you wanted to, I am building a lot of goodwill, a lot of trust, and a lot of um, um, basically education, seeded education around what I do and how I help people into the market. And so what I'm seeing and what I'm getting is effectively um, mass trust building with my prospective customers. And why is this different to sending a brochure or something else? Because this is educational. They, the nature of the relationship that you're engaging with people on a LinkedIn event is different. Yes, we're all human beings and no one human being is better or smarter than another. But I'm sharing my insights, which people either find valuable or they don't. People either get to know me and like the way I do things or they don't. So this whole process that I'm doing with the events is a filter. Hi, Ted. Welcome. Yes. Um, so uh, the key thing is to use your events to grow, grow with exactly the right people. And I'm going to give you a tip here. And um, I know so networking is what we call it on LinkedIn, but let me give you a tip. Only connect with the people who are prospective customers, are deeply connected with prospective customers, so colleagues, people in similar uh, roles, seniors, junior, those kind of people who are connected to your decision makers, and the people who engage with your content. Now, I said this earlier in an audio event, you do not want to fill your network with irrelevant connections because that will harm your content visibility. It will work against you. So fill your network with prospects, people who potentially could be customers. There'll be a few people who scrape in that you think, absolutely not. They're not relevant to me. But you want to narrow it down. I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago and they said they've got 25,000 connections in the network. And I said, let's go through it. Let's go on Sales Navigator. Let's search through your network and see how many prospective customers you have in that network. And we got to, out of 25,000, just over 25,000, 345 people. And they were looking at this network going, I've got this big network. Well. That big network only works for you if they're all people who would refer you or they're people who know the right decision makers and can get you an inroad or they're the right people. So be picky about who you connect with, because if you fill your network with too many of the wrong people, it will harm your content. It will harm your visibility on the platform. 
it will damage your your position on the platform. And I'll, I'll just explain why. I know I'm going off on a tangent. I'll explain why. When you share posts and content on the feed, LinkedIn decides to notify and alert and share it with people it thinks it's relevant. And that's part of LinkedIn's way of testing the quality of the content. Now, imagine if you've built your network in marketing for decades and then five years down the line, uh, five years from now, you switch into cybersecurity. So your content goes from marketing to cybersecurity. Are your marketing contacts going to be interested in cybersecurity? Probably not. So what happens is LinkedIn could, could start showing your content including your audio events, alerting your network to your audio events, but they start showing those things to the, to the marketing crowd. And the marketing crowd go, I've got no interest in cybersecurity. So guess what happens? LinkedIn takes their lack of interest as your content isn't good. And so it harms your visibility on the platform. So I was talking with somebody about this on this event earlier, and I said, if you've built your network with a lot of people in a lot of different areas, it could actually work against you with your content. So um, events, it's so critical that you grow your network with the right people. And just to factor this in as well, once you build an event, whether it's a webinar or what have you, on LinkedIn, you can actually, this is past, but you can share and a little invite button will appear here and you can actually invite your connections. So that's why it's important that you grow your network with the right people because you can literally invite the prospects you're connected to. But if you're not connected to many or you've got a sea of irrelevant contacts, it's going to be really difficult. So audio events on your profile, I'll talk about how you follow up and convert them in a moment. But audio events on your profile are really powerful. Now, when we look at the company page, the company page actually has even better facilities for events. The first thing you have to do, though, and just whilst I'm here, I'll do a little plug. If you are watching this live on LinkedIn, do come over to our company page and drop us a follow. Really appreciate it if you do that, just so that it gets us out a little bit further and you get alerted to the new stuff that's going on. So on our company page, as long as you've got more than 100 followers, you can actually create an event. And you can see here, I've done 217 live events on our company page, 217 events. And I've got six coming up. And here's today's event that you're on. And you can see here are the events. So next week, I've got three lead gen strategies for LinkedIn. And I can click on that event. I'll talk to you about some features of the LinkedIn events that are way more powerful. So first things first, when you've created your event, you've got the invite button, same as you've got on the audio events on your profile, and you can invite your network. So I can go and invite people from my network, and I can invite them by industry, and I'm going to go uh, business consulting and services. And it will show me all my first degree network that are in that industry. And I can scroll through them with the infinite scroll. I'll just do it now whilst we're on. And you can see I'm infinite scrolling. So if I've got a great network full of lots of prospects, this is fantastic because I can invite a lot of my network all in one go. And then I can literally click the link and invite 145 people. Come on, LinkedIn. You can do this. There we go. I just invited 145 people and I can invite up to about a thousand people per week. So if I've got an event once a month, in theory, oh, I got a little bit of a glitch there. In theory, I can invite up to a thousand people, uh, sorry, 4,000 people every single month. A thousand, 4,000 people every single month to my events where I can add value to their world. They can get to know me, they can get to know you, and actually I can really engage my prospects. So I can just invite broadly, but obviously if my network is full of interesting prospects, it makes sense. It makes absolute sense to target based on the people who are interesting to me. 
it makes sense to talk to grow my network and invite the people who potentially could 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 use my services it doesn't make sense to invite people who cannot buy from me but the problem is the filters on these events are quite broad so if you've filled your network you could be thinking this is great i'm inviting loads of people but you could be literally be inviting totally the wrong people so i could sit here and go oh, i'm inviting a thousand people but because i've invited a thousand irrelevant people it doesn't make any benefit to me so you can see i can invite anybody from different industries and i can just go for it so you see i'm inviting people here really really simple thing to do i'll just stop it there because i think i'll give you a clear enough demo but you see in a few seconds a few minutes i've invited about 400 people across the four batches of invites now what's important about um doing these events i'll give you some tips when you create an event on your company page there's a couple of features that I think are better and most people miss these and make these mistakes. So I'll just show you again, create an event and there's your header image. There's your event format. I'm going to come to that in a minute, in person or online, event name, dates and times, end time. And you see this one here. This, if you fill this in and put your privacy policy in, LinkedIn will do a, an attendee list for you. It'll collate an attendee list for you that you can download. It'll have their names, job titles, and all that kind of stuff in that you can use. Bit of a description, tag the speakers. All common sense stuff. This feature is quite useful. I use it all the time because if you want to follow up with people, it's handy to have an attendee list to follow up with. So, when we come to these events, and I'm talking specifically on the company page here, I'm going to give you some feedback. The first one is external event. The show up rate of driving people off LinkedIn for a LinkedIn event is horrific. I tell people not to do it. They're so obsessed with, oh, we'll put it on a special platform and it's behind a, you know, a gated, it's, you know, all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no just don't you will lose so many people and i'll give you an example why and most people have never thought this way let's say you did it and put an external link to zoom some people might not want to go on a zoom they might go hang on a minute i'm going on zoom am i going to have to be put my camera on and introduce myself to a load of bunch of strangers so there's a whole series of aversions that people will have about going to an external link but when I do LinkedIn Live, they just come and watch me. There's no fear that I'm going to uh, pick on them and ask them to introduce themselves. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. You can listen to me and, you know, you don't have to contribute, comment at all. And this is, this is something that we think, oh, no, no, we need them there. We need to see them there. No, that's because we want to see them there. Actually, it's a bit weird me sat in my new office that's a little empty talking to a camera and I've got no curtains up in front of me. So my neighbors can see right in here and I'm just sat talking to a laptop. So you might feel a little strange just talking like this, but actually it's, it's easier for your prospects because they're not being put under pressure or on the spot. So I always use the LinkedIn Live because it's far more successful for me. LinkedIn audio events on a company page I've actually had very little success with, so I tend to avoid them. I work on basically the LinkedIn lives on the company page because of the data capture and the audio events on my profile. And I gather if I was if I was running a small business, I would go, right, I'm going to grow my network. And once a month, we're going to have an audio event or a LinkedIn live. And we're going to talk to people, share value give give direct call to action and follow up those people now i'm just going to jump through a couple of these slides because i i want to kind of get to the point but i'll give you this example here this is um why you do the company page one right you've got a one click sign up event they're the formats like i said on a company page 
you want to do a LinkedIn Live. It's far more successful. You can do them on a personal page, but obviously you don't get the registrations. So I do a lot of my audio events and just random lives on my profile. Um, events are great because they are educational. If your event is just, you know, we're all here to sell, but if your event gives off vibes of sales pitch or QVC or, um, you know, it's not really a, educational it's just a uh, hey look at our product people are not going to pay attention and they won't won't um they won't uh, engage with it so uh, you have to give genuine value you have to give something that's useful so hopefully this is useful and like i said i think it's about 25 quid if you want to get access to the course we actually show you how to construct it how to put it together how to follow up uh, the actual building of the event is easy, but the whole mechanics of how you present the event and run the event to actually make it successful, there's some really important things about how you do that. So why do you want to host it? I'll give you some tips. Um, number one, C-level decision makers are more likely to study an event and pay attention to an event and observe it than others so your difficult decision makers or difficult to reach decision makers are more likely to attend and a lot of big technology companies use these kind of online round tables as a way to get those conversations with the right people started uh, you need to focus on the topic and the pain points you solve so you attract the people who resonate so i always focus on say the wants you need to understand the needs the pains and the wants where do they want to get to because people come to something because there's a healthy level of discomfort and they really want to achieve an outcome and most of your events need to tie in with the outcomes that you can deliver not just the topic the topic on its own is not good enough it has to be an outcome that you can deliver the side effect or the secondary benefit of this is that as you do more educational webinars and audio events, you're actually going to amp up your personal brand. You're going to build your personal authority. People are going to start to trust you because you are sharing genuine value. You're delivering the goods for people. And the other thing that's really important is on the company page, when you do a LinkedIn live event, LinkedIn, when you tick that box, LinkedIn will give you the data email addresses of the people who've registered so you can send follow-up materials off the back of the webinar so you can follow back up with them um, again so it's mammoth but you have to follow up if you're not following up on these events you are missing out if you think that people will automatically just go hey this is awesome i'm gonna hand over my money and you have to be deliberate in how you plan the whole process so that you actually get the calls and the follow-up things booked. When I'm teaching my clients how to do this, I'm saying if you do the webinar right, you'll have leads in your inbox by the end of that audio event or live LinkedIn event. Now, will they all convert and will they all be exactly the right people? Of course they won't, but there will be a percentage of those people in there. And if you're running them at good intervals, not too intense, but you're able to invite and build up some promotion around it, you will have a within two or three events, two, three hundred people coming and 60, 70 percent of them will be the right people. As long as you do the groundwork to target the right people, speak to the right desires and wants and objectives, understand their pain points and launch it with not just a, hey, we're doing this launch it with actually LinkedIn is our primary channel to get to our decision makers. I see so many LinkedIn events and I go, what have you done? You could have trebled, doubled, 10 x the number of people who've been at that event if you'd have had a coordinated, joined up plan. And it linked to what you were going to sell. The topic was right and the promotion plan was right to fill it you'd have had something rocking and rolling, absolutely rocking and rolling. So there's a whole process and plan, but I'll just give you an example of what this looks like if you're doing a live event. 
Now, like I said, we've got the mini course that will teach you how to do the audio events. If you've got a network of a thousand people, you can have an audio event up and running and be going next week. You could have one up next week. There's mechanics of how you do the, how you deliver the audio event. If you want to educate and generate leads, it's not something you can just go, I'm going to give a load of information and it's all going to come together magically. That does not work. There's a pattern of how you do it. And it's counterintuitive to what most people do. Most people think that just giving knowledge, just giving information is the answer. Oh, wow, you've blown me away with information. I'm obviously going to spend my money with you. That's not how it works. You have to show people that this is a, there's, there's way more to it than I can go into here today. But on a LinkedIn live event, you would create an invite. Yeah both a post, promotional content, you build the event, you invite people through the event itself, you promote the event, you message some of your network about it. As everybody registers, LinkedIn captures the registration and it will put it into their calendar. But you can, because you've got the data, you can send, you know, email reminders to give them a nudge. On the day of the event, you've got to deliver it in a very specific way to capture um, buyer interest early. So by the end of the webinar, you've got a, a number of people, not the majority, small number of people who are ready to talk, want to talk more, want more information. Then you deliver the webinar replay because not everybody's going to show up. Another mistake that people make is they think that because they didn't come, it's wasted. It's a total mistake. If you get, let's say you put do a webinar and you get 200 signups and 50 people come, you go, oh, what about the 150? Doesn't matter. You treat them as if they would have come and give them all of the same things. I've had people who said, I really wanted to come, didn't get around to it, forgot, booked a call, and within days they've become clients. So it's not necessarily just the case that, oh, because they came, because they didn't come, they're not interested. Life gets in the way. But if you discount them, you're making a huge miscalculation. So everybody gets the replay and everybody gets followed up. And we follow up. We do two put versions of follow up. We follow up with nurture emails and stuff like that and newsletters. But we actually, a member of the team will one by one go and reach out to these people and say, thank you for coming. And did we answer all your questions? Is there anything we can help with? Would you like to have a call to see about what we do? Can we help you in more ways? We do all of that stuff manually, right? And some of you go, oh, manually, I don't want to do manually. Well, the more care you take, the more results you get. And I have this philosophy you automate what works. You don't automate because you don't want to work. You automate what works. You don't automate because you don't want to work. So I always say this to people, with content, with outreach, with anything, you have to make something successful before you can automate it. Otherwise, you could just be automating failure. And lots of people do that. They just automate failure. So uh, I'll just show you what the process looks like if you really want a blowout. So if you want an absolute blowout, you want to start eight weeks before. Set out your whole plan, the events up, eight weeks before. Now, if you were running a sequence of these, you'd obviously have this all laid out in order, right? So whilst you're promoting webinar one, there'll, excuse me, there'll be a crossover period with webinar two. And with webinar two, there'll be a crossover with webinar three. Yeah, so you, you get the gist of that. And literally the step-by-step -step actions that you have to follow. And then there's various email reminders you can send to increase and sustain the show-up rate. These are core principles that you should be following in terms of making a webinar successful. Now, let me just address a couple of things that people often say to me. And if there's any questions, by the way, you can feel free to put them in the chat. Um, hi, Steve. Uh, there's a few people there on um, YouTube as well. So welcome on YouTube. Sorry, I've neglected you a little bit there. But uh, let me just throw a couple of questions out there that people normally ask me whilst we're 
we're a little quiet tonight, actually. So let me just um, uh, tackle a few things. And then what I'll do is I'll leave the mini course on the screen. So if you want to email us for details, you can do. Uh, I think it's about 25 quid, something like that. Um, what's that in dollars? $30? $30 about that? Um, with tutorials and templates and stuff. Um, so um, just a quick one on this. So uh, let me let me just give you some quick tips um, that will help you. Uh, sorry, my slides have got a bit glitchy here. So number one, right, are webinars dead? A lot of people say, oh, the pandemic, we've done lots of events. Everybody's webinared out. It's not true. It really isn't true. Uh, I, I read the state of sales report recently that LinkedIn publish. And they they do massive amounts of surveys and more decision makers are saying than ever before that they like to attend live events, workshops and training to help them understand and make buying decisions more than ever. And less uh, it's falling the number of people who say we'd like to engage with salespeople early. So whilst we might think, oh, uh, webinars are on the way out, are they? Well, education as a sales tool has been around for centuries, for centuries, free education, you know, um, meetings, workshops, free presentations. This, this model has been around for centuries. Education as a means to promote your business. It's, it's existed forever. Um, so the fact that webinars are still here is just a digital version of what we used to do at a town square. It's a digital version of what we used to do in meeting rooms. I actually do this whole model in person as well. So tomorrow I've got about 60 people, I think it is, that I'm doing a workshop for in Manchester. And then the next day I'm doing 20 people in Newcastle. So uh, training knowledge, education, sharing insights has been an essential part of the sales journey forever. But more people are recognizing it as that. And so whilst we think, oh, we're webinared out and we're Zoomed out, you know, we were sick of Zoom calls and back to back meetings, being able to sit back, relax and pay attention to stuff in a Netflix style um, television program almost like i'm doing tonight you can interact and ask questions with me of course but I, i'm doing it kind of where you're not here so you know this kind of um interactive um webinar might be a little bit tired but th to be honest a lot of them aren't a lot of them are thriving because people are help, using it and helping them. It's helping them to make buying decisions. So um, if you're thinking, oh, webinars, um, let me just give you another thought process. Um, you may also be a little afraid of webinars or nervous of doing them because you think it has to be formal. Now, if you look at my webinar style, it's more conversational. It's a bit relaxed. I don't like doing PowerPoints because PowerPoints are so restrictive. I use the PowerPoints more as a an anchor point than anything. I don't really kind of go, oh, I'm going to read everything on the slides. That's a boring presentation, by the way. We think, oh, we have to make it like that's boring. People want that bit of down to earthiness. And some of you think that you have to do it in a particular way. You have to be this or you have to be that. Let me give you the biggest revelation of your life. And that's probably a bit dramatic. But you and your personality and your style is a filter. It's a filter and it's a good filter. We often think, oh, well, what happens if we be ourselves and people don't like it? It could cost us sales. It could cost us this. It could cost us the other. But actually, if you think about it, the sales journey is, is particularly for me, who's, you know, I'm selling my expertise and my knowledge and, you know, people have to work with me and my team. Is that I'm allowing people to taste what it's like to work with me. 
I'm not everybody's cup of tea, right? I could probably grate some people up the wrong way. I'm not, I'm not, I don't do things in a very structured way. I think about how can I help people get to the result? And if that means tweaking it a little bit, let's tweak it a little bit. So I'm not as regimented in my delivery in the way I do things. And to some people that might be going, mm, I'm not so keen on that. And to other people, it's like, yeah, I like it. I can flow with this. It feels relaxing, but I'm also getting value. It's sinking in. So me being myself in front of a camera doing a webinar is a filter that helps the people who gel with me and connect with me, but also repel the people who probably wouldn't get on with me anyway. So it's a false economy if we go on the webinar and don't be ourselves, because when we come to the sales call and actually meeting that client, it doesn't matter how good our offer is. If they don't get the, 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 the vibe, if we're not connected in that way and they see I can work with Dean, it's not going to work anyway. It's not going to work anyway. So whilst you might be nervous about doing the webinar and the audio events, it's actually quite liberating because you get to be yourself and use yourself as the differentiator. Use yourself to deliver a different style and a different take. Instead of seeing it as, oh, well, I don't feel comfortable doing this. What if I don't do this? What about? I make loads of mistakes. But it allows people to connect with you. Same for audio events. Uh, I can tell and we can all tell when somebody's literally reading a script. When somebody's literally reading word for word, it doesn't flow. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel comfortable. But when somebody's being themselves and sharing from their expertise, it flows. Even with the bumps, the ums, the ahs, it flows. And so uh, getting into it is, is a habit that you have to develop. It's a skill you develop. And you can't develop it in theory. You can't develop it in practice. You only develop it in execution. You know, the first webinar I did like this, the first one I did, it was hobbled together. My computer was jacked up on a wooden crate and I'd had two gins before I did it because I was so nervous and I was like uh, uh, bumbling. Um, but the more you implement, the more you execute and do it, the more your true personality and style comes out and the more you feel comfortable doing what you do. Um, and let me give you an example. Uh, I'll just come onto my screen again. Right. So you can hear me talking right now. Right. So let me show you the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the slides, right? Why host a LinkedIn event? LinkedIn live events are still one of the most popular ways buyers engage with businesses. It's a great way to showcase your expertise and build authority. Buyers are more open to follow up and booking calls following live events. Tip. Here's a tip. Sensitive buyers prefer broadcast style events versus Zoom. Now, you can tell in the tone of my voice when I'm reading versus when I'm sharing naturally from my expertise. So by all means, use slides, by all means, use notes and key points. But if you follow them too religiously, your delivery will actually become more formal and people won't gel with you as much. So it's really important that you kind of um, make the time to just go with it, make it happen, get it done get them using, um, use it as a filter, but educate your audience, add the value, because when you add the value, you actually get the trust and you become the trusted advisor. It changes the nature of your relationship with your prospects. So you're not just like another salesperson. You're that person who gave them that idea. You're that person that helped them see a different take on it. That's the key here. Use the events, not as a kind of QVC or, hey, come and look at our amazing tech. It's like, how can I serve you and add some value into your world so that you get to know me, you trust me more. But also, I'm probably the one of the people you'd ask. If you go, Dean, we really want to win a million pounds worth of new business from LinkedIn in the next 12 months, you, I'm probably the person some of you will want to talk to. Some of you might go, that Dean seems to know what he's talking about, but I can't stand him. And that's all right. 
Because if you can't stand me on a webinar, God help you if you had to work with me to generate a million pounds worth of business. I'd be I'd be talking to you every other day. Could you imagine how annoying that would be? So use it as a filter. Use it as a filter. Um, Luke's been in the chat here, so I'll just check uh, if there's any other questions here. Yeah, Deva, you need a minimum 100 followers on the company page to do a live event and capture the data. Um, how do LinkedIn posts get you sales? Um, so, um, Mohammed, that's a big question. But if you want to get sales from your content, um, there is very specific content you have to do. And if you want to message me on LinkedIn, I, I've actually got, um, um, it's called a 71 content ideas that are focused around lead generation and how to build up that visibility. So if you want that, just message me on LinkedIn and I'll send it to you. But if you want the mini course, I, I, I don't want, don't quote me. Um, but if you want the mini course where I break this down and explain it and show you how to present it in a way that gets you leads and inquiries, um, don't quote me exactly on the dollar price because I'm, I'm not sure where the conversion is, but I believe it's about $30. It's about £25 UK. So that's about 26 cents, 27 euros, something like that. But drop me an email uh, uh, on the email you can see on screen. Send me an email if you want access. We'll send you the link. If it's not for you, it's not for you. That's cool. Any questions? Any other questions whilst we're here? Any other questions whilst we're here? Are you all very quiet tonight? I'm just looking through the chat here to see if anybody else has got any questions. No? Very, very quiet tonight. You're all a quiet bunch. So let me just have a look here. Uh, yeah, any any questions, please let me know. Uh, drop me an email. Email address is on screen. And we will send you the details of how to how I built basically my business off LinkedIn events. Really simple. Built the whole business off LinkedIn events. Um, you know, we've got clients who are small businesses. We've got some clients who are major enterprises, global businesses, all through the same method. Buyer education, educating your audience, educating your customers so that they buy into you. They know, like, and trust you, but you're the first person they call because you've added the value into their world brilliant way to do it. Okay, so if there's no more questions, I am going to sign off and say thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me. If we're not connected, come find me on LinkedIn. And if you're watching on any of our socials, please do the likes, the comments, the thumbs up, uh, the follows, the subscribes. Really appreciate that. And go have a look and have a go at your events. They're really powerful to educate your audience, build that trust, and accelerate your sales. So thank you very much for joining me tonight. Dean's strategy helped me find clients. I created clients for my business uh, with this program. It works. My connections have grown, my reach has grown, my views have grown, and actually so is my business revenue. Over that three month period, I have actually signed up three new clients at a cost of £50,000. That's over just the three month period. So it is, it's worth it. Every single time there's a session, I just feel like it's well, it's just a, a golden moment. Every single session brings me something really new and really valuable. And I've started to attract um, high value client sales, which is wonderful. And it's really given our business a boost. Dean Seddon and the Maverick team, what can I say? Um, apart from absolutely awesome. The results have been amazing. We have had loads of incoming leads coming into um, our you know lead funnels and, and workflow processes on our website. And we've also built a really successful community around the content that uh, we produce and push out into our LinkedIn channels. My team has also learned a lot from working with the team at Maverick, and they've also helped us really create fantastic events on LinkedIn. I'm much more confident, and all of that, without a shadow of doubt, is down to the work and the training and support I've had from uh, Dean and the rest of his team as part of the Accelerator course. In terms of the training, Maverick have been absolutely fantastic. They've been so supportive. They've talked me through all, all the stages of what you have to do, why you have to do it, the benefits of doing it the way that they tell us to do it. And I've gone from being 
no, with no social media to being actually addicted because I can see what this can do for lead generation, generating new business. It's just been incredible and Maverick have been superb throughout the whole process. The guys at um, Maverick, they've been great. Um, Dean and his team, very knowledgeable, uh, wealth of experience. Um, we've had quite a few one-to-ones now that really taught us the the depths, the nooks and crannies of LinkedIn, which none of us would have known before. And I think we can continue to use that going forward. And it's, it's been great so far and uh, I hope to continue to use it as well.